and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. Good morning. I want to say a few things to us as we come to the communion table today. Uh, we've, we said there are 12 foundations on which God built Zion. You know about the city of God in the book of Revelation. It has 12 foundations. I also want you to know that Abraham, the Bible said in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, that Abraham got to the land of Canaan. You know, he got there before his descendants who went to Egypt, finally came back there. And he settled in it with the patriarch Isaac. After he saw the promised land, the physical promised land, that God told him to leave his father's land for, after seeing it, the Bible said, then he began to seek for another city that had foundation. Whose builder and maker is God? He knew I've got this one, but this is not the essence of that promise. You have to understand that the Old Testament people had the types, the shadows, and expressions of this thing, but until Christ came, the real essence of most of those things that were promised them did not come. For example, Old Testament had its own glory. A poor apostle compares it to the glory of the New Testament. He tells you that, that glory is the one that fades away, just like what happened at the face of Moses. They had healing. They had the miracles. And sometimes you might be tempted to think they had more stuff than we do here. No, they don't. Because there were limitations. To start with, one of the major limitations of that, of that covenant is, is that it was only to the Jewish people. So each prophet that will come in will write about a time when the Gentiles will not have access to this thing. When Isaiah was writing about the birth of Christ, he said, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder. Down the line, he start talking about how that day that sat in great darkness, the eyes of the Gentiles, upon them a great light has. There is no prophet that didn't write about how that this man will now break this world and bring the Gentiles into the common world of Israel. And not just that he brought us into what these people have been enjoying. He now made a new covenant that was better than the one they had. So whenever you come to the communion, the first thing you should come understand as you approach is that you are dealing with covenant here. You are dealing with covenant here. Now, because it is something that functions for the body of Christ, it is not something God designed for the world. It's just like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said the world cannot receive. The Holy Spirit is not a gift to the world. So as we want to go and bless the nation, this is not one of the things we are to give them. Of course, there is a law about the communion that the Egyptian is not allowed to eat it. But if he wants to eat it, then let him accept circumcision. That means join the covenant. So when you read the Exodus chapter 12, this is not for unbelievers. This is not for those outside the covenant relationship with God Almighty. This is something that God gave between him and his family. And between members of the family and one another. So see the point. There is a personal benefit in it. Where it deals with your relationship with the Lord. This the highest level or platform on which you can always renew that relationship. Is what God left for us on the church. So that a man who comes to the communion table. Is actually like a man who traveled to Calvary back 2,000 years ago. Went there. And opened his mouth while Jesus was on the cross and his blood was dripping and drank it life. Jesus did a miracle in John chapter 6. He multiplied bread and fed 5,000. So the next morning, multitude be said, first of all, when they saw what he did, they wanted to take him by force because the people got instant revelation. The multitudes, 
He stands up and he says, This is the prophet that these people said had done. This is the man. This is him. And you know, one thing Jesus didn't want throughout his early ministry, he tried to avoid too much of that disclosure of that other. He tried to avoid it more. Because remember that this is one thing that the prince of darkness did not know. If they had known, they would not have. They knew that he was the son of God. They knew he was the Messiah. But they didn't understand the plan. What you're talking about, the setup. See what Joshua did to the people of God. The plan that God had for redemption of man. And this is the plan. There is something that had to go for us to come out. And so we talk about substitution. And it was God's son that was substituted for us. It's like a change. When they came to arrest Jesus, he was standing there. First of all, he knocked them down with the glory of God. To let them know, you, you, you're not taking me by force. I want now to take off all your face, all your head while you are asleep. Because they were all in a kind of spiritual coma. You know, I faced a lot of dangerous times when I was on campus working, trying to end courtism. I had a few times I was attacked. And there was one particular case where a leader of a particular court came to my boy's quarters, armed, both with gun and all that. And um, I actually thought he wanted help. We got his girlfriend born again, and he was angry. He wanted to deal with me. And so I took him to the kitchen. There's a table I have there. I read there another with a chair. And we entered the kitchen and sat. So I thought he needed help, so I could talk with him. And, help. and he pulled out a gun and put on my face. Anyway, at that moment... Uh, there was only one thing I could do. So when I, I appealed to the power in the name of Jesus, he lifted the young man and knocked his head. I was surprised later that his core did not break. My, my, my kitchen had this elevation where you have the chimney. So he knocked him on the edge of that elevation. And he was in a coma. Can you imagine? I disarmed him. Removed all his gun, took it to the forest, he did, buried it. You know, um, there was a nearby farm beside whatever. I removed his gun, he had daggers, he even had charms, he had some other things too. I removed all that, hid them well, came back, he was still in a coma. And I had to go and send for Braden, and Braden came and carried him from the kitchen out and laid him on sand, and he was still in a coma. And then called sisters. Two sisters came and joined. And we started commanding that spirit to come out of him. And this guy began to manifest, undress himself without knowing what he was doing. Undress his trousers. Undress, and people are trying to stop him. He couldn't be stopped. Tore his shirt, undress his whatever. And finally we got that thing out of him. And he got up. And answered that. That was the end. He went back. I gave him an order. And brought all the peripherals of that court. I burnt it in that same BQ. Of course, the professor who owns the house came out. By the time we got to burning, it was getting to 11. He called me. He said, you have finished me in this house. That means they will now come here, kill me, kill my children, burn down this place. I thought I came to help you. You're a pastor. Why have you brought this kind of problem? Why didn't you carry this boy to up campus and burn this thing there? You know, some of the courts... Use jars and all that. But anyway, his salvation also led to another attack. Because another time I came and my whole house was surrounded in the night. But that particular case, this is what Jesus did. And I don't know how to knock people down like that. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are safe. Because if, if I know how to do it, it will be, I think we might need to have to study it. Because there must be something there. Anyway, <laughs> it's true. There is a lady... When I heard this lady's testimony, she's a black lady. I first heard her papa that was brought her some years ago. I thought she was just bribing. Until I got some of her dozer. He went into a shop, came and somebody grabbed her bag. He said, stop there! Now, if you don't understand the laws, don't try it. Or don't, it's better. Let the young Robert go with it. He said, stop there! Before I ask God to kill you now. He said, I'm not one of the women you can rob. With a gun, no. Oh. Ah, the guy now came close. You know those blood? He said, I'm warning you. I'm giving you five minutes warning. 
The guy said, five minutes is long enough for me to kill you. He said, not, it's not possible. This is on the street. He said, I'm going to ask God to knock you out. The guy thought, woman, knock me out. And then she screams this thing. The guy is in a coma on the floor with his gun. And she has done it about seven different times. In New York. Now she has a reputation. They don't mess with her. They, they know her already. They leave her. Because at the end of the day, you know what Elijah, Elijah did to those guys he arrested? Uh-huh. She has blinded a, a few people too. That's a woman. Oh. But to me, by divine intervention, I believe it was God and the other. But then let us see the point. Uh, Jesus had this band of men lying on the floor. First of all, he wants them to know my life is not taken. I have power to lay it down. I'm the one that wants to lay it down. Then this laying down too, there is a reason. So finally he got up. He said, who are you looking for? They say, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And I said, listen, you want me? Let this go. You know what happened there? They were arrested, all his disciples. So in other words, this lamb that is being offered is for, if I give you the ransom, then you let the man you are holding, that's substitution. So when he was now hanging on the cross, we were the ones hanging. When he was being beaten, we were the ones being beaten. So I've already suffered for my sins. Not physically, but in Christ. Everyone say in Christ. Oh, that in Christ thing is a mis- is so much is in it. I've already died. This life I'm living now is a new life that came out of death. Like after you plant your corn, it has decayed then. The tree comes out. It's a new life. The life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. For example, if a believer actually finds out that he has HIV, you can live 70 years, even with the virus. Each time you go, they tell you he has not gone. He is still living 70 years. Because now, the life you are living in the flesh is not by blood anymore. It's by the life of the Son of God. Jesus, yes, that is the truth. That is the truth. It's, it's absence of enough of clear teachings on some of the subjects that is causing the problem. It's not that Christianity has become weak. We need apostolic voices and prophetic voices again. See what happened. When he died, I died. It's me that was hanging. When he was buried, I have been buried. That's why after you give your life to Christ, you are to experience a burial service called baptism. And let nobody sprinkle water on your head. That's not barrier. What God wants is six feet. So that when you come out, you know you have already died. When anything called death is threatening, you tell them you don't threaten a dead man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You should be able to go and say, this is where my grave is. Go to the spot. It should be River Niger or River Dees or whatever. This is where they buried me. The old person, ancestors are pursuing. He said, foundational problem, ancestral problem. You should be able to take them to where the bridge was broken. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is where it is. Baptism is another ordinance again. No matter how many people have tried deliverance, give me that person. Let me take him to the water. That demon must live. And this is some of those baptismal services we carry. We take them inside the water. They can't walk out with their two legs. You can't walk out with your two legs. They are carried like corpses. I have had baptismal services when we are conducted. You know, like this farm. Everywhere will be laid. Human beings will lie like zombies. Just because they enter the water. When we activate the truth, the power that goes with it comes back. We went for one. When we finished, people were lying all over. Demons were coming out of people. All kinds of things were happening. Of course, there is a particular girl who said she had water spirit and she goes inside and all that. He said, please don't baptize me. That the people are there. I say, it is better. We put her inside the water. She disappeared from her hands. <laughs> people went in and started searching. I started laughing. I said, I said. Bread and rushing. They were looking everywhere. Nobody could find her. 15 minutes. I told them to be single. I wanted to get some clearance from. Nobody could find her. And we're not talking about deep river. River that gets here. So, and they were singing. I said, Holy Ghost, what is that? He said, he's buried. She's buried now. But he decided to collect both spirit and body. <laughs> so I said, what exactly? He said, command her resurrection. Baptism does not end with burial. It must end with what? 
He said, as the Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father. So everyone that goes down will rise into what? Newness of life. So I issued, I called her name and said, the same power that raised Christ from the dead, resurrect you. At least your own is better. You travel down to hell. A little, into whatever. There's word under the water in case you don't know anyway. Travel down. So now when you come out, you are married with the kingdom, marine world and kingdom that is, ends completely. And then the thing pulled her, threw her up in the, from the water. And she fell back into the water and they carried her and left her. Screamed out all the demons. And that was it. So, one particular time when we finished, people had gotten up on the villa and we were just worshipping. The villagers that came to fetch water we were all standing. There were many of them. So we were just worshipping. They saw the water is not clear. They rushed into the water to go and fetch water. And all of them got slain inside that water. It was somebody that had screamed. And we told this people were drinking water. So we had to go and get yeah, yes, drinking that brown water, and we have to go and carry, <laughs> and carry them out. Didn't you notice that he was baptism that Jesus finished? Heaven opened. Didn't you notice that he was baptism that Philip finished baptizing a Chopin? No, the guy just disappeared. Next thing they found him in another city. We call him Philip Airline. What, what kind of baptism did you receive? Anyway, but that, that's not the point. Don't, because I don't want to get that. You now want to go and start talking. Maybe I need another baptism. That's not the point. Unless you have not been in mass. But if you have been in mass, you have been what? In mass. What you must now have for the life you are living now is to understand the functionality of the resurrection life. Hey. Uh, anyway, communion is our concern today. When we come to the cross, when we come to this, what we are coming to is to where? The foundation of Christianity is not the virgin birth. <laughs> the virgin birth was foundational to qualify the Messiah to be a Messiah because if he had sin and was born in sin, the virgin birth did not qualify our faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The foundation of Christianity is where we are revisiting. Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation. A dry stone, a tested stone. Whosoever believeth in he cannot be confounded. Not by HIV. Not by sickle cell anemia. She has a cousin now that was born with this sickle cell. She grown up girl. When the crisis come like this, so that I was say, Pastor, is, nobody can handle it. It's such a terrible mess. Especially when you see a sickle cell dealing with a woman. When I open this mystery, genotype surrendered immediately to AA. And years have passed. Up to how many years now? Whatever you understand that the death and resurrection of Christ represent is available at the communion table. When you take the bread, you are actually like a man who traveled to Calvary that day. Why other people were watching? You took knife and cut a pound of the literal flesh of Christ and ate it. You have eaten the Son of God. How can Tamite eat you? How can those bacteria be eating you up? Don't you know that it was an ordinary animal, a lamb that they ate in Egypt when they left that night? And when they ate it, from old men that were feeble, slaves that were bondage, they were bruised in the Bible. Said there was not one feeble person among their tribes. And that power energized their body and they were able to walk for 40 years. 40 years. No burial service except those rebellion when they crash with the covenant. Because this same covenant that saves us can kill. That other side of it is very, very important. That is why we have to understand what we are doing. Whosoever drinketh my blood and eateth my flesh. So God gave them something they kept eating. He said every year you hold the feast of Passover. Jesus did not tell us to hold it once in a year. And he said as often as you do it. Our own Passover should be as often. 
he has been slain, but the reenacting, the eating of it, the experience of it, as often as you do it, you reenact again the Lord's death till he comes. That is, you are making Calvary real again till he returns. So I told my wife after we got married, I said, there is a revelation that I have that even if I'm dead, if you carry communion, just the smell before it enters my mouth, as the cup is nearing my, my nose, you smell it. I'll wake up and say, good afternoon. First time I raised a person from the dead, this is what happened. Because the question I asked is, is this person born again? I said, yes. I said, is a child of God? I said, yes. I said, I can reverse this verdict. I can reverse it. Because I understand where to pull God. And he can't say no. Bring the covenant. God has no right to say no when the covenant is in place. Because that is where he took oath. And signed his signature. And put his thumb. And said this, this, this. Because when he entered into a deal with Abraham. Abraham kept doubting him. I will give you a child. He said how? I will give you this land. He said how will I know that I will have you? He said okay no. Bring the turtle dog, bring this animal, let's enter covenant. Because after this, you will have guarantee. You know that no one can go back again. So the Bible said that when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no other, he swore by himself, saying, In blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. If we want what our relationship with God, not just to be mere words, so that he, one day he might decide to change his mind like any other person, you have to have something with which you hold him. There was something with which Moses held him throughout the wilderness. Even when the people make, make, commit obvious crime. Like, moving another God for themselves. There is one thing that is contained in all those prayers that those men pray. That each time they say, God say, I've repented. The moment they say, remember your covenant with Abraham. Because you gave the man your word concerning his descendants. And now you are angry. You want to kill them. The moment you pull the covenant, God's head comes out. And something you need to know about God, though, he, he's a, a, God, a nice person, full of love. But one of his personality too, is that he's also a consuming... I'll tell you what I mean by that. Electricity is good. See all the things that he's doing for mankind. Giving us light cooling, fan, powering everything that makes life go. One of the problems we need to solve in this country is to make this steady, the flow of electricity steady, just like we need to make the flow of God steady. But the problem with constant flow of God too is that this electricity too, if you don't observe certain laws about it, I hope you know it can bring down your whole building and burn it. I hope you know there are some laws that if you ignore, it can burn all the appliances in your house. And you yourself. If you <laughs> disrespect this force called electricity, it will fry you. Did I know how messless electricity can be? Is there a Nepal man died in Enugu? I came into town and they were telling me, they said he just finished wedding. It was two weeks in his wedding. And he was called honeymoon. It was called that there was a social problem. And he rushed, you know, one of those power stations. I think it is the New Heaven one, I'm not sure. One of the power stations. And they are precaution for entry. Watch this, my friends. There are precaution for entry. Whether you are a honeymoon or that, you are a trained Nepal official. You should know the rules. But of course, he rushed in. The thing fried him. What people were able to pick out as his body was burnt charcoal. They say even the bones turned black. When you see where electricity deals with a human being, a very fair person can become dark like this micro. He has ability to fry to a certain level. Of course, you pass stockfish, it can fry it further. So you now understand why God uses transformers. And step down. So look at me here. I am God in passing through 
I'm a transformer that has reduced something that can kill everybody here now so to such a level that you can have a handshake with God. Have a handshake with God, my friend. Do you know you are shaking God now? I'm not joking. Now. Many of you don't know. Don't know. You don't know. He's having a handshake with God and he's standing on his feet. Sometimes the thing gets to a point. People go under the power. We say, we, we, we think he's something. Going on that power. He should fry the man. But this is step down. Everyone say, this is step down. Yes. Say, I'm a power step down. Sure, it's transformer. That's why sometimes that walk, the transformer is doing to hold back. Sometimes you notice that the sword can get to a point, even transformer can even be what? Burnt. And two sons of Eli got burnt. This is where if transformers God gave to the Israelites, they were called priests. They can go there and... But the question I want to ask, because if we understand it, because in the New Testament now, we're all giving the same access that the priests had then. We, we can go. So the people that are not giving access are the people outside. The covenant people are not giving access. What is it that the priests use to keep themselves from being born down? Because that transformer in your house is already enjoying current that has been stepped down many times. I hope you know there is a big transformer in your street or somewhere nearby that has brought the thing down. It's not what kind Jidan is supplying that is coming to your house. That one has lowered it so well, but yet after lowering it's still too high. Maybe for your appliance. So they tell you when you buy this keyboard, buy this, you know, adapter. See that adapter there. It now brings the one, the 220 volt that is coming here again, down to the level this keyboard can take. Because this one would blow it. So I want to ask, what is stepping this thing down for the priest? They know they die. They can die. You saw two of them born to ashes. And they had to use those ropes they tie on them to pull them. Because if a never man dies inside that, whatever, it's a danger zone. And you walk to grab him, you will join him. Then the top person comes to help you, he joins. Another person comes to drag you, he joins. 100 people come to drag you, they join. Unless that power is switched off, every other person that joins dies. So God told them how to tie them with rope. So as they go in, in case where they should use insulator, there are things they should wear in their hands before touching electricity. <laughs> they don't wear it. Then you pull the <laughs> non-conductors can be used to pull a person that is being conducted. <laughs> pull him out. So you don't join him to die. What is that thing that saves the priest when they go to see God. Because we are priests now. We are family members. Now, I want you to know, it's not as God is trying to scare you away. The problem is that God is already like this. He can't change his nature. Fire cannot change his nature. Fire is good. We need it to cook. Electricity is good. See all that he's doing for us. Will you prefer for us to go back to those ages when we have not discovered electricity? But electricity... It's a constant. It can't change. He said, I'm the Lord God. I do what? It's already my nature. When he appeared to Moses, he was listening. He said, I'm the Lord merciful. You need that one. Gracious. That's the type we like. God does whatever. But he also said, wonderful. I'm also... So we don't teach those parts. That's why we are having casualties. We don't teach those parts. We have picked the merciful and other. I'm assumed that he changed the other side. He didn't change. What he did was to create a principle that can hold back the destructive side of God so that he can come and fellowship with a normal man, natural man, and leave him with a blessing and not a destruction. And that thing is called the blood. Everyone say the blood. No priest tries entering there without it. Who are you? Not even a high priest. That will be your last ministry. So New Testament tells us that he has given us a new and living way through which we can go beyond that veil. 
Hey, beyond that veil, there is something there. He said he has given it to us. But we can open that veil and walk through. And when we finish, we come out. He said that new and living way. First of all, the veil he said is the flesh of Christ that was cut open. That was broken on the cross for us. Then the blood. Having now boldness to come into the holiest of all. By the blood of the Lamb. So the first part about communion is your relationship with God. If there are certain things you have not been able to assess, you have prayed, you have fasted, at the communion table, the boundaries can, will be forced down so you can assess what the covenant promises you. Because you are reenacting the covenant and whenever it is reenacted, God has to let go of or whatever. Mistakes, you have not been able to obtain forgiveness of sin. You have not been able to. It's not that God didn't forgive you. You that maybe have. Or maybe you have not been able to reclaim your pure conscience. Because after you have said sorry, I'm, this, is, this is the moment you can leave this place clean like snow. And then the second part is that. That same covenant that gave us that divine partnership, divine connection, is the same thing that binds us together. Okay, let me give you just one scripture. Just one scripture. Um, which side should I choose the scripture? Let me choose the divine side. Maybe I will give you two. Maybe one for this, one for this. Let me look at the divine side. There's something I want you to see. There's something I want you to see. One thing I like, I teach principles. And the principle, you can test it in different situations. It still yields the same result. Once the laws are observed, you can test it in different environments. No matter where you take me, no matter the kind of church, no matter the kind of environment, I can make God appear. There is a law that makes him appear. That's what the priests know. This book is a book of principles. That God came to one service and he was glorious. And he was doing much. I will never forget that service. And then the remaining part of the year, service is dry of God. That is never took light in church. You know, there are a lot of services without God. I hope you know. Have you been in a service where God's presence was there? How many of you have been there? Let me see your hand. Have you ever been in one where it didn't show up? Let me see your hand. The worshippers didn't know how to make God appear. They were operating on guesswork. The, probably the priests too didn't know the laws. But sometimes these same people that are holding the mic, they're supposed to be leading all of you inside that curtain. I have not been able to cross even the first level where you wash your hands with water, your legs with water, to a holy place. They have not entered. The place of taking you inside. Because there are laws that lead to these things. Why is it that Benihim, each time he leads worship in meeting, ooh, the man understands certain things. I said this to myself for seven years until it clicked in my head. And when he now entered and was, you know, coded in my spirit, I stopped saying it as often as I said. I live for a crusade. I live for a program. As I cross the boundary, I leave. I declare it as I enter the aircraft. I declare it as I land in the boundary of that. I'm a New Testament priest carrying the blood of the everlasting covenant, coming to bring atonement for the problems, the sins, the sicknesses, and the problems of the nation. Now I declare to the gates, Lift up your heads. Because you, you can't stop me from entering. You can't. You can't resist me. I have something ahead that breaks down doors. You know, that thing is what the moment you, it was released in Egypt, Pharaoh surrendered the people. Somebody calls it God's last card. And Jesus spent three years doing all kinds of miracles. Satan was still holding humanity. He even heard some of his disciples like Judas and Peter. The moment he went on Calvary, he had surrendered everybody. Because Calvary, 
and the resurrection that followed it is where the defeat of Satan was sealed. So I want to show you the scripture, Leviticus chapter 9, and you know, oh, you're going to come to the communion table. I don't care what it is that is in your system. There is nothing I have not seen happen when people take communion. Nothing. Even somebody, even cases of blood count that was low, the count would just jump like this. HIV is slain at lightning speed, just like that. It's only what the cross did not cover that we cannot access through the communion. And I want you to tell me what it is. He said that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. And now release those held captive because of their fear of death all their lifetime. To deliver those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So that, first of all, through death, he destroyed him that had the power of death. Took care of Satan and released everybody. If he could release the ones in prison under the earth, in hell, and in whatever you want to call it, how can't he release you that has no rich prison? Leviticus chapter 9. Just to talk about that vertical thing so that you know what is between you and God. Leviticus chapter 9. It came to pass, verse 1, on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons, the priests, you know, the elders of Israel, and he said to them, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering, a ram for a burnt offering, without blemish, offer them. So this without blemish, why the Immaculate Conception, Jesus was born uh, of a virgin, is to qualify him to be our sacrifice. So this without blemish is not for the Jews, it's to qualify the sacrifice to be offered. Because if you have sin, you can't die for my sin. Anyway, so, and offer them before the Lord. Remember that each time you read all these sacrifices, they offer. There are two things you can see, which is interesting. One, you can look at the act of sacrificing. The principle of sacrifice, which is one of the most deadly principles in scriptures. That things that prayer have not been able to do, add sacrifice to it, you can force that wall down. That is one side. But really, in the context of the scripture, whenever you look at this sacrifice, born to offer this, the interesting thing in it is life being offered. Life is in the blood. Is that a blood element that is coming out of those living? That's why, you know, is the key thing. So that's what the altar requires. So he said, I've given you the blood to make atonement on the altar. For it is the blood that make it atonement for your soul. He said, therefore no one should be eating blood. Talking about animals and all that. But now God has offered us his blood to eat. Offering it on the altar is enough to procure our salvation. But why is he now offering it to us to drink and to eat? Because when you do, the life that that blood carries enters your being. The life that sustained Jesus when he lived there after functioning in your mortal body. When you hear, see blood, remember life. When you see a sacrifice, animal, or any of those, remember blood. When you see cavalry, remember blood. When you see blood, remember life that was offered. That's what atones and redeems men. Because it's your life that needs to be saved and it's a life that was offered to pay for your redemption. So, you, you see the occult people and others still offering animal sacrifices and some human sacrifices. God has offered a sacrifice that has secured the life of every man if we can get the understanding of what happened. So, that principle is the first thing you need to take note of here. When you take note of it, now, if you read down, you are now going to come at the revelation. So, if you read verse 3 and 4, he listed the, the sacrifice and they took it and then they offered it. But now, get down to verse 4. Okay, let me read it so you know that I'm saying the same thing. After verse 2, which I've read for you, 
verse 3 said, And unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of goat for a sin offering, a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish, for a burnt offering. So you see, what preserves the priests is what preserves the people. He told them, Hello, take these animals, offer their blood for your own whatever, so you can gain access to represent the people. Then when you go in to represent the people, take also for the congregation the same thing and offer for them. In other words, if we train the people to understand what the priest is doing, the people can go in. Verse 4. Also, a block, a ram for peace offering to sacrifice before the Lord, a meat offering mingled with oil. He said, for today, today, for today, the Lord will appear unto you. He said, you do this thing when blood is on the altar. Today, not tomorrow. Today, the Lord will appear unto you. And it will have been a coincidence. Maybe it's just once in a while. And I want you to see where God turns it into a law. Verse 5. He said, and they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that you should do. And the glory of the Lord will do what? And start checking your Bible now. There is no place it was offered that the glory did not appear. What made the glory appear when Solomon dedicated his temple? It's not the building. It's not the building. This is the principle that brought that glory. When he offered those blood and blood feed everywhere, he now stretched his hand. Fire descended. So think about Solomon. He's a politician. He's a king. He's not a normal prophet. He's not a priest. How can Solomon have God appear to him? When God appeared to Solomon personally, what did Solomon do in Gibeah before we got to the temple? He went to give up. This is what he offered. When he finished, that night, the Bible said, God appeared to Solomon. I want you to know, you are leaving this place with God's appearance to you. I'm not like one of your pastors and all these talks that feel pretty because I'm not talking, I'm not talking. I'm not giving a cliche. I know that preachers say things and people say amen. I'm not into that. And they use that your Pentecostal mind and relate. Amen. Tomorrow your life is powerless. A native doctor will set up an arrangement, knock you out. Believers are not going blind by occult power. Believers are being knocked down with snow by occult power. What is wrong with the church? If you like, let me be in the village. Let me see a pot smoking with charms, with all that. I can silence that smoke. I know what to do. Just, oh, This is what the Lord commanded. It's a principle. That each time you do it, what happened? The Lord will appear. Hey, when Abraham, in Genesis 15, God told him, bring those animals, slaughter them, and the blood was in between. Did God appear to even or not? The Bible said, there came a smoking furnace from heaven and descended and passed between the pieces. What do you think made fire come down when Elijah? What is that revelation Elijah had that he could be laughing at the... The prophets of Baal. He said, call on Baal. Call, do all that. Remember that he's the one that said the condition of the challenge. He said, well, it's fire that we're going to know. Fire coming down from heaven to know which God is what. Then what is the Lord that brings fire down? If he didn't know it, he would have been disgraced that day. This is the law. That if you want the fire, put blood. Blood is that thing that insulates the glory. So that it doesn't get to the point of consuming humanity. Until when we leave this sin stained, where we can look at God like this, he won't have effect because we're existing at that his level. Just like when Adam, before he fell, we are operating on Our spirit is already in that state. What is not yet in that state is our mortal bodies. This flesh and blood cannot, it will be consumed. It will be consumed. That's why even whether it's Elijah taken to heaven or all those people who have gone, there is a translation that occurs. They experience a rapture and get something happen to their body so they can cross into that realm. This one will be burnt. Hey, 
ordinary space. Do you know the kind of radiation in space? You go there without space suit. Even with space suit. If you venture closer to the sun. But you go there. Ordinary the atmosphere, the environment destroys you in it. There are people who work in nuclear facilities and all that. There are certain things they dress, cover themselves, even their eyes, everything. Then they now look through. They have found some materials that that can penetrate. Then you now come and if you don't take those precautions, This is the thing that the Lord commanded that you do. Each time you do it, the Lord will appear to you. That was why Moses had the audacity to tell them, Today, this thing is a law. I know when we finish it, if God doesn't appear, you know. There's, when you understand some principles, there are some... You can, you can talk like this prophet. How can Elijah be laughing and be mocking? Next minute he said, bring me the calf. He repaired the altar of the Lord and takes the cup and slays. And water and blood was everywhere. When he has got it, he answered the He said, Pour water if you like. Pour water. The, the, the thing that brings fire is already there. It's not fuel that brings divine fire, it's blood that brings it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not fuel and matches that brings it. It's what? Blood that brings it. Didn't you see the response of heaven when Christ died on the cross? Didn't you see there was an earthquake that shattered the rock? There, there were some things. Even the cosmos took off light. There were signs that God operated in the system. Uh, one Roman soldier saw it. He said, no, no, no. Truly, this is the Son of God. <laughs> when the Jews saw it, that day, a man came in. What happened? <laughs> he said, everybody went on their face. I said, the Lord God, He is what? Hey, we can take God to the nations. Amen. We can take God to the nations. Amen. How can people like occult men like Bakasi come in the street and they are demonstrating and the church don't know anything again? They have understood certain things with which they operate the acts of darkness. He said there was a time in Israel when there was no more teaching priests. So dark, darkness was in the land. Destruction to men. Nations were destroyed of nations. God, they have also disconnected from the living God. There was no teaching priest. And the, the law has been until a man rose who had to call them back to the covenant. <laughs> and after that, peace and rest came to the land for years. Each time the church misses our direction, you want to pull us back. The place where you need to take first, Calvary. We need to sit them at Calvary and reenact the ordinances of redemption. That's how to force death. Death will be on the run. That's how to force Satan. You will be running. You will know what is. That's how to force hell. That thing that visited them on that ground, they don't want to experience it again. They don't want to have this revelation of life in the church. Because this revelation declares the emancipation of every man. I look forward to a time when we come to some cities. We'll serve communion to a whole city and clean out the city. Sit them down. If it's a large field, just there, do what Jesus did before breaking the bread. You know, say, sit them in groups of hundreds. Put pastors, Pentecostals this side, Anglican this side, this one, one this side, group, and then we take just one bread with satellite showing in some areas and. There can't be one place together, somewhere in one field, somewhere in satellites, whatever. So, as you are watching through the TV, just remember, we are reenacting Calvary. We are re going to crucify Jesus right here now and resurrect him right here now. And then you can walk through into the experience. You know, Paul said to the Galatians, Who bewitched you? He has to be witchcraft. Because before you, Christ was evidently set. As though he was crucified right before you. What do you think Paul did and taught them that it was as if they saw and experienced the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ? Is the mystery here, my friends. The mystery here. If you take this and you are not healed, it means that if you were to go to Calvary and drink that blood, you won't be healed. That means you didn't have revelation of what you were doing. You are simple as that. It's as simple as that. 
if you take this bread and nothing happens to you, it means you could have gone there and taken a bite of, of, of the flesh of Jesus and nothing will have happened to you. Meanwhile, the life of God is inside that body. The life of God is what is in that blood. It's not the life of your father or human life. It is that thing that makes God, God called Zoe, the life and power of God. That when he jams the, the natural, he fries it. The Bible talking about the anointing alone said, If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it shall quicken, it shall vitalize, it shall, oh, your mortal body. Why don't you lift your hands and say, Lord, open again to me the, the revelation. Of your death and resurrection. What the cavalry represents. What you did for me on the cross. Give me a f- fresh revelation of the cross. The Lord just said to me, A tumor just died in somebody's brain. You have been having this headache that is persistent. It has lasted for a long while. You have not been able to suppress it. Even drugs. That tumor, that tumor that died in your brains. Come out here, Bakoyo. Forever you will be. The lamb upon the throne. Over above my knees. To worship you. <laughs> the glory of God is entering the building again this morning. Forever you will be. is here again this morning. He's here in person. I see him. He's here again this morning. (laughs) Oh Lord. My God, open the eyes of your people. Open the eyes of everyone.
<laughs> oh my God. Open the eyes of everyone. Let your glory be revealed to everyone, 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 Lord. I bring your people into the curtain behind the veil where no one can be and remain the same again. No one can be behind the veil and remain the same. The face of Moses changed while he talked with you. Let us be transformed by the glory of your presence. Let us be changed in the light of your countenance. Let the yokes of the flesh give way. Let everything that's held us bound break loose. You are the one that sits upon the throne. You are the one that sits upon the throne. the year you are moving into is a year of divine visitation god is telling me that he's going to visit you starting from this day you are going to know god on a personal way there are certain things that will change there are certain things that will shifted in your life as you are drawn near into the holiest of all where god can reveal mysteries to you he said to Moses, it's time you come before the mercy seat. He said, remember, there I will commune with you. That's where I share my heart with men. That's where I share the deep things of God. That's the bedroom of intercourse between God and his wife. Things that are covered with clothes that are not open for the public. That's where God opens them to his beloved. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. 
just to be close to you is my heart desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Is my heart desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my heart desire. Just to be close to you. 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 In my life. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to me is my This is the end of this part. Please play the next tape in the series.